Things at Manchester United need to be sorted out pronto. Manchester City, Liverpool and Chelsea all setting the pace in the Premier League. We were right up there at the start of it, but now we're starting to fall off. And if United and Solskjaer don't fix Manchester United's problems, then we're going to really fall off the pace going into October and November with some serious games coming up for United, including Liverpool, Spurs and Leicester. So what this video is, I'm going to speak about the plan that Solskjaer must have to fix these problems because he can clearly see there's problems there. We can all see there's problems there and we need to talk about what we can do to actually fix them, at least improve them. Please, throughout this video, if you enjoy it, drop a like on it. Please leave your comments too and subscribe to United People's TV if you are new in town. But let's talk about United's problems and what Solskjaer can do to fix them. The first problem with United right now, I think is quite obvious. It's our lack of clean sheets. You look at the examples of our defensive organisation, it's abysmal. Against Villarreal, we played with McTominay in the 4-3-3. And the, the clear-cut chances we were creating there were disgusting. Diogo Dalot was getting overloaded. It should have been managed in-game a little bit better, but just the, the, the whole defensive organisation there. Instead of Varane there, I mean, Varane's come in and our defence got worse. That's not because of Varane, but how is that the case? Everton's goal there, you saw how many of us were basically doing honeypot football chasing the ball and ignoring the positions on the pitch. Luke Shaw at fault for Everton's goal. And if you look there against Villarreal, wow, but just all of it. And it all comes from training, for sure. So if if um, if Mike Phelan, Michael Carrick and Kieran McKenna are all getting new contracts, I want to see them prove their worth by improving our organisation on the pitch. And it has to happen. We need to get a defensive coach in. You'd have to wait for the transfer market to open to get one of those done. Bring in some specialist quality to improve an area which is fundamentally weak inside the setup we've got. And looking at our defence, it's not just with the defensive organisation. Playing it out from the back is our kryptonite, really. Because we need to do it to help with the, with the whole of the build-up play that Manchester United had. But play it out and we lose it. We're very bad at it. Kick it long and we lose it. So we're backs against the wall, stuck between a rock and a hard place. Can't really play it out from the back and can't really go long. We need to improve in that. And... It, it's at the core of our, our lack of possession. Because if you look at how we are, like we cannot soak up pressure. Take that Everton game, for example. That was a game where all United needed to do was take the sting out of it. Take the sting out of it. We were in control, had momentum, brought Ronaldo on, brought Sancho on to get that second goal. All we need to do is sit in a nice disciplined shape, control the pace of the game and the tempo, and play it through to Ronaldo and Sancho to try and get that second goal. It didn't work whatsoever. And if you look at how United are defending counter-attacks at the moment, it's abysmal. We scored, conceded from a corner against Everton. Bruno took a corner. It was poor. And we saw the breakaway. We saw Fred and the fact that he should have taken the other card there. It's poor. All of it for me comes down to coaching. Whether you want to point the finger at Solskjaer or you want to point the finger at Solskjaer and his coaches. You can do what you want. But ultimately, it comes down to what United are doing in the training ground and taking to the pitch. There's a massive disconnect happening there. And that has to significantly improve almost straight away. If United really are going to make sure we try and, and at least hold on to the coattails of Liverpool and City and Chelsea, who right now, looking at it, are so much more complete as a team. But with United, it's not just in defence that we have issues. Because arguably our biggest problem lies in midfield. It was always going to be the question mark about this season. Fred and McTominay, they were the bane of people's lives. Well, United fans' lives anyway. Going into the start of the season and nothing has changed. If anything, it's got worse. And it's got worse because when you play two holding midfielders and you're not keeping clean sheets, in fact, you're on the worst run in the Premier League since in 50 years in terms of keeping clean sheets at Old Trafford. And you're still playing Freddie McTominay? There's no justification for it anymore. Those two holding mids are really holding us back in everything. And just, just how bad we are in playing with possession in our back four and back five with De Gea, it gets worse when you go a little bit further forward with Freddie McTominay. It doesn't work. We have no build-up play through our midfield. It's almost bypassed. No one's got the confidence or the ability. No one's really, rarely in the right position to receive the ball. You've got Fred and McTominay, whose natural instinct is to drop deeper and sit closer to Varane for a shorter pass. But when they turn around, Bruno's further up the pitch. Bruno's natural instinct is to go further forward. Fred and McTominay's natural instinct is to go further back. And it creates this huge gap that lies between them that we need to resolve. Again, down to coaching. For me, the solution is Matic and Pogba, though. I think that's the only solution we've got inside our club that can work. McTominay's not a defensive midfielder. Fred is not a defensive midfielder. Simple as that. Pogba 
and Matic, for me, offers the best blend and best balance. And balance is key. It's crucial. I'll get into that next. But I know that Matic and Pogba can't last the whole season because Matic is, what, 33? 30, well, he's, over, he's old now. Old AF. And Matic hasn't got the legs. Oh, man, I wish we had a Matic of five years ago. Our, our midfield problems, we wouldn't have any problems. We'd have a great midfield. Because we do, we have to find a solution. We have to find a way of keeping Matic and Pogba as fresh as possible to play alongside each other in these games, as far as I'm concerned. There will be matches where Fred and McTominay make sense. They'll definitely start against Liverpool, for example, in a game where it's high energy and the tempo is ridiculously on a next level. That's where you can't really play Matic. And Pobble would probably not find the space to operate in that midfield role. That's when Fred and McTominay would kind of suit. But I want to see Manchester United finding a way and a solution to get Matic and Pogba in that team as much as possible, oh, as much as possible, and more importantly, keeping them fresh for as much of this season as we can. Because at least until January, we can't get the solution. And we know what the solution is, signing a proper defensive midfielder. And all of the problems that we've got in defence and all of the problems that we've got in midfield, they manifest and they combine to create a massive imbalance in Manchester United's team. It's everywhere. It's in defence, it's in midfield and it's in attack as well as far as I'm concerned. Uh, look, we, have, we have been scoring goals this season, we have been creating half chances, but our finishing is poor at the moment, as is our clear-cut chance creation. No balance and there's no style. And it's all interlinked and it's all interweaved and it's all part of each other. That's why the problems are, are, are so big at United, really. Because we have been moments FC this season, we, you know... We, you have to admit it. We all know it because we've never really read. Uh, that's, and that's what frustrated me the most about that Everton game is the first 45 minutes. I actually th I looked at it and go, we're actually controlling the game here. We're playing football, playing nice little short passes, controlling left to right, moving the ball around. And then it, well, we, know, we all know what happened in that second half. Now, what is, what is the solution to that? The solutions, which I've already spoken about, better coaching, better training, better management to improve that midfield better choices in terms of the selection. And for me, a crucial thing that's really going to hopefully change things for United going forward, and that's the return of Marcus Rashford. I think Marcus Rashford is going to be, he's going to have a lot on his shoulders. His brand new shoulder, by the way. He's going to have a lot on his shoulders, a lot of expectation, because when he comes back into that team, our attack will actually be balanced, in, as far as I'm concerned. Rashford on the left, Bruno in the middle, Sancho on the right, and Ronaldo up front. That is a properly balanced team with players in the correct positions, doing their jobs, staying wide, Offering that width, coming short, coming inside. Jaden Sancho, Bruno and Sancho all operating the pressing game together with Ronaldo staying up front. You can see the shape, you can see the balance, you can see the style. And I think Rashford's going to really set the tempo just as much as Bruno does. And by having him back in the team, it should hopefully, I think, give United a far more balanced unit overall than we have had without him. Because we've played Sancho on the left and Greenwood on the left and then we've had Popper on the left, we've had Greenwood on the right, Sancho on the right. It's been chopping and changing a lot. I think when... He comes in, it's either going to be Sancho or Greenwood on the right, but it's always going to be Rashford on the left, Bruno in the middle, and Ronaldo up front, as far as I'm concerned. So for me, these are the three major issues that I see at Manchester United at the moment. I mean, I say three issues, there's loads of issues inside them. But one is about the defensive shape and setup and organisation and all the problems that come as a consequence of that. Number two is with the midfield, the midfield setup, the midfield imbalance, the midfield selection, the lack of possession, the lack of build-up play. I say three problems. There are far more than three problems. But all of it, all of it, I think, can be helped with coaching. All of it, I think, is a product of not good coaching. And I think because there's no way that you can say that Varane coming into your defence makes it worse because it doesn't. It makes it better, so much better. Yet it has made it worse. Therefore, we're looking at a, a, a consequence of the the collective rather than the individuals, which is very much what you could not say about United's attacking force because that's very much a, a a consequence of the individuals rather than than the collective. But in in a defence, you've got to be a complete unit. You've got to be in in shape, in discipline the entire time. And defensively, we're just not there. It has to come from coaching. For me, we need to bring in a defensive coaching specialist. It's what we did in the, in the summer with Eric Ramsey and the set pieces. We've got to do the same thing with defending because Solskjaer is an attacker naturally. Michael Carrick's a midfielder. Not really doing much with the midfield though, Mike, are you? Uh, and Darren Fletcher and Mike Phelan. I'm not sure what he does, if I'm honest. Um, I'm not. He might do a bit of everything. He might focus on defending. I'm not saying that he doesn't do anything, but I actually don't know what Mike Phelan does. And Kieran McKenna, he's he had a very short playing career anyway. But we need a defensive coach. No questions. We need Marcus Rashford to have a real impact when he comes back. We need these differences and changes put into this midfield setup. And for me, those three things, 
I think they're all going to be part of Solskjaer's plan to fix Manchester United, to get United heading in the right direction rather than the wrong direction, which is where we're currently going. And we need to do it because I've said this before, look, there's, there's so many arguments and debates to be had about whether United need to win a trophy this year. But what, even if you don't think they do, United need to be in the mixer. We need to be in with the chump. We need to be come the start of the end of March, start of April. We need to be up there towards the top of the table. Because if we're staring 12, 14 points behind City and Liverpool again, it's going to be very, very hard to justify Ole Gunnar Solskjaer getting another season. It really is. We need to be in and around it. And going into this October where we've got Leicester, we've got Spurs and we've got Liverpool, if we don't buck up our ideas, that gap at the top of the table might only be a couple of points at the moment, but that gap will be seven, eight, nine by the time the start of by the time you're like halfway through November if we're not careful and then we've got that mad fixture pile up in December things have to change and have to change and improve fast at United for me I'm pointing at these issues which I've identified in this video what do you think we can do what do you think Solskjaer can do to fix Manchester United and fix our problems on and off the pitch let's just focus on the pitch you let me know what you think about that in the comments below is it about the coaching is it about the setup is it about the players is it a bit of everything? You let me know what you think in the comments below, as you always do. And please, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe and drop a like on the United People's TV for me. I mean, we kind of have to talk about the problems that we've got at the club. You can't ignore them.